Hi everyone, this is Morgan, just dropping in to let you know that we are officially part of a new production network. Plainer Prod is a new independent network run by two childhood friends, Soren Brywood and Morgan Greensmith. That's me. Our focus is inclusive storytelling to inspire and enchant, and The Attic Monologues is our first show. To find out more about our company, our crews, our goals and policies, and news on other upcoming shows, check out plainerprod.com. This has been a dream of ours for such a long time, and it's thanks to your support we get to achieve it. So without further ado, back to the show. Welcome to The Attic Monologues, episode 12, Like a Writing Desk. to future Nicks. I don't... There's not really any notes. I guess... I just wanted someone to talk to me. I wanted to talk to Bella. But I can't. Not right now. Not yet. Not when there's so much. It's been two days? Three? I mean, it's the 16th now, so one, two, three. Yeah, three days. Three days since I... Since the letter. I try not to think about that part. It's too... Well, three days since I ran away and broke a hundred promises that were already in tatters. Three days since I last saw Bella. I'm not hiding. I'm not. I apologise to everyone a hundred times, especially to Bella. And of course, Lola said I didn't need to, but she always says that and she's wrong. And I don't expect them to like just Forgive me immediately, just like that. I know, I... It's like that mirror monologue said, right? How many times can you slip up before it's worked permanently into your bones? Before it's folded seamlessly into your character by those who know you? Oh, that's Agatha. She makes a lot of mistakes. <laughs> That's Nix. They make a lot of mistakes. Or rather, the same mistake. Over and over again, and expect their friends to stick around anyway. Do I expect them to stick around? Or is this my way of self-sabotaging? Hoping that one day there'll be a final straw and they'll finally give up on me. Maybe it'd be easier if I just... Hey, kid. Hey, Ambrose. Any for your thoughts? There's a peppermint mocha in it for you, if you're interested. Got anything stronger? Technically, yes. Right. If that's what you really want, then sure. But it's not going to help much with those storm clouds in your head. To be honest, the thought of alcohol makes me feel just a little sick right now. I'm not surprised. Thank you for letting me stay here. You're absolutely welcome. Anything for a friend in need. Are we friends now? Well, we've done all those typical friendly rituals. I've looked after you when you're drunk. I've made you breakfast. You've slept in my house. You know... That's actually pretty one-sided. Very selfish of you. If I tried to make you coffee or any sort of meal, I promise you it'd be inedible. Also, I live in a student flat, so unless you're happy sleeping on the floor, you're a bit screwed. Speaking of which, why exactly are there so many beds here? Did I miss the part where this place is a and b It's not a and b because I don't charge for beds. It's hard to explain. A caramel and clove is like a, a community sanctuary, a place for people to meet, but also a place for people to rest. I provide the roof, and they provide the company. That's really cool. <laughs> I guess. Is that why you took Bella in? She hasn't exactly told me everything, but... 
Bella's a special case. Our families have known each other for a long time. They work together. But you don't have to join the family business like she does. I'll tell you a secret. I'm sort of the black sheep of the family. You think they wanted me running away to work in customer service? Sure, I could have gone into all that paperwork and money, but why do that when it doesn't actually help anyone? I prefer to get my hands dirty, so to speak. You can't help anyone if you're shut inside ivory walls, you know? Yeah. Wish you could explain that to Bella. <laughs> she knows. Have you... talked to her at all? Not really. She's... She'll be okay. She just needs some time. Bella's always... She likes to sort out her emotions on the inside. Chew them up and figure out how she feels before she externalises it. Good thing I'm staying out of her way, then. It's not that she doesn't want to see you, you understand. She just doesn't want to hurt you. Ambrose, I hate to break it to you, but I'm the one doing the hurting. And maybe that's why you're hiding here. I'm not... I'm not hiding. I'm just waiting for the dust to settle. I know I need to give it time. Sometimes fixing things means not touching them. But if I was hiding, you wouldn't tell her that, would you? Your secret is safe with me. Thank you. Anything for a friend. Although I'll be expecting you to cook for me one day too, no matter how inedible. On your own head. <laughs> Do you mind watching the shop for a sec for me? I'm not expecting a rush and I need to grab some paperwork. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. Night is the best time for being lonely, don't you think? No one else to clutter your thoughts, to get in the way of everything you want or need to do. You don't need to do anything at all, if you feel like it. You are a god, beholden only unto yourself. Right. I only mean to say, it's nice to see someone else making the most of this most disgusting evening. I happen to quite like the rain, actually. And yet here you are, huddled inside. Because it's like minus five degrees out there? Like I said, a perfect evening for being lonely. Then why are you in here? Go stand in the rain and be morose by yourself. I'm good being morose in here, with a hot drink and not getting the flu. I was here to see Ambrose, actually. He's a friend. We go a long way back. Right. And do you always sit down at strangers' tables to try and freak his customers out? I don't make a habit of it, I'll admit. But it's not often you see someone looking so utterly the way you feel. Penny for your thoughts? No offence, my dude, but I don't even know your name. Ah, it's Raven. Of course it is. There you go, now we know each other. You don't even know my name. Your nicks. <laughs> it's it's on your notebook. You're really not doing anything to prove you're not just some creepy dude. But the aesthetic is cool. I'll give you that. Oh, why, thank you. A person of taste, finally. You know, my sister told me that I looked like I was dragged through a hedge backwards. Oh, and Athri frequently likes to inform me that I look more like a tiny chicklet thrown out of the nest shortly after birth. Okay. Well, even if you're a weirdo, I can appreciate the all black. Although the feathers might be a bit much. Did you pick the name to fit the aesthetic or the aesthetic to fit the name? A little bit of both, I suppose. I see you didn't take the same tact with yours. What do you mean? Nix! As in, the Greek personification of the night. Child of chaos, mother of fate, 
Destruction, revenge, death. Why, why does everyone think I name myself after her? Is it not enough for me to just sound cool? Although that other stuff does sound pretty cool. You should read the classics, if you haven't already. Hesiod's Theogony has a passage on... Who let the trash in? Athri, sunlight. How are you? You are not allowed to call me that, Feathers. Ooh, so creative. I can't wait for your next blow. <laughs> Go jump off a cliff. <sighs> you wound me, truly. Is he bothering you, Ryland? Uh, not really. We were just talking. About the rain. About the rain? And melancholy and loneliness. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that sunlight. Less than you, I'd wager. Don't you have chicklets to herd? Um, they've all flown the nest, I'm afraid. So you decided to harass Ambrose's customers instead, like some lost mother hen. Your boyfriend doesn't seem to mind. My husband likes you because you're basically family. That doesn't mean I have to. You'd know all about disliking family, though, wouldn't you? Ooh, a low blow. At least I have some left. Hmm. <laughs> Who kicked you out of the wrong side of the bed this morning? Who kicked you out of the library? It's 5 p.m. I'm off shift. Really? Because you do always seem to be in here. Hmm, strange. So do you. I leave you people alone for five minutes. Rosie! How are you? Good. Good. You here for a bed? Uh, I'm afraid so. My lovely sister has thrown me to the wolves again. Something about ungrateful, money-draining grifters. There's the Regina we know and love. Isn't she lovely? She also isn't wrong. <sighs> Good for her. Nix, if he starts misbehaving, please tell him he's sleeping on the pavement. Do you truly think so little of me, Ambrose? I'm hurt. So, like... How do you guys know each other? I used to babysit him. Him? Um, Ambrose? Were you still in nursery at the time? <laughs> I'm older than I look. I've aged super well. Uh, yeah. Is it the unlimited supply of coffee? Is there magic in the blueberry muffins? Both. Definitely both. I'll have to come here more often. You haven't left for three days. I know. I know, but I'll leave. Eventually. You can leave whenever you feel comfortable. If you don't leave soon, suddenly you'll be ten years down the line making coffee with a rictus grin. And this is why I work in the cafe, and you do not. Uh, the library is a customer service job too, you know. And how often do you talk to the customers then? N never. But only because they all ask stupid questions like, where can I find this text? And why are you ignoring me? And what are you doing to that book? All quite average questions to ask of a librarian, I believe. You're not allowed to talk. You've never had a job in your life. Oh, I have a job. Not a real one. You're paid to look pretty and pretend to be important. Oh, Athri, you think I'm pretty? Watch out, Ambrose. You have competition. Choke on your own feathers, please. Back to the original point. Nix, please do feel free to stay here for as long as you want. Thank you. I... I probably should go home, though. Face the music, or something. Plus, all my stuff is there. Of course. You can keep the clothes. Please let me know when you get home safe. Will do. I've definitely learnt my lesson on that one. It was absolutely charming to meet you, Nix. Uh, same, my dude. I'd run if I were you, before he starts soliloquizing. <laughs> I'll leave you guys to it.
Thank you so much for listening to the Attic Monologues. If you're enjoying our show, please consider supporting us through our Patreon or Ko-fi to help us compensate the hard work our team puts into every episode. You can find links in the show notes below. Alternately, you can leave us a review or tell a friend, an enemy, or your oblivious love interest to listen. This episode was written and produced by Morgan Greensmith and directed by Ellen Clohessy. It was script edited by Ellen Clohessy and Soren Briarwood. The sound design was by Anna Leclerc and the theme tune was composed by Wilkie Morrison. In this episode, you heard the voices of Atlas Morgan as Nix Ryland, Joseph Leyland as Ambrose Trelaw, Ellie Sandhouse as Raven, Kaz Goodman as Athri Dane. The logo was designed by Ailey Lang. The social media is run by Soren Browood. You can find us on Twitter at Attic Monologues and on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and TikTok at The Attic Monologues. For more information on our show, our crew, our policies, or other shows made by our people, check out our website, www.planarprod.com. Episode 13, Nights Like These, will be out on Wednesday, 27th of April. See you then! Bella? Sam? You home? Why are the lights off? Bella? I'm sorry it took me so long to come home, but I'm back now. Talk to me. I'm sorry. And now we'd like to introduce you to our friends at Back Again, Back Again. We are such huge fans of this podcast, and if you've enjoyed the Attic Monologues, you'll definitely enjoy it. It's got Narnia, it's got the Oh Hellos, it's got magical girls with swords and trauma and queer disasters. Literally, what more could you want? But we'll let them tell you in their own words. So without further ado, here's a trailer for Back Again, Back Again. Elias is an ex-prophecy child. After spending five years in another world, Brisea, she wakes up, only to find that mere minutes have passed in this one. There was magic there. Friends and people she loved, and so many adventures and scars and memories. Everything she knows pales in comparison to the place she left behind. Not knowing how else to deal with her loss, Elias starts to tell the story of her own adventure, while desperately trying to find a way back to it. Back Again, Back Again is an audio drama by me, Abigail Eliza, loosely based on the Oh Hello Soldier Poet King. It's about girls with swords, prophecies, alternate realms, and, of course, it's very, very queer. Episodes are released every other week, and the first 20 plus episodes are available wherever you get your podcast now. I hope you have a wonderful day.